Hello folks and welcome back to the channel. We are back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. With this video I want to answer to the many fellow pilots in the channel who are asking me to um, summarize uh, in a video all the settings I'm using for the virtual reality. Uh, several times I tried to uh, reply uh, via text message but I realized that the video is the best uh, means to have everything summed up and explained. So this video will be split into uh, the first part dealing with virtual desktop and a second part dealing with my PC settings, uh, the graphical settings and uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator settings as well. Just to recap, I'm running an i5 Intel 13600Key processor and an NVIDIA RTX 1480 Super graphical cards. My headset is a MetaQuest 3 128GB, uh, uh, which I believe is the best option to jump into the VR world at this time because it's not expensive, is pretty much widespread and it is a quality headset. Let's get started. This is virtual desktop. It comes with a streamer and the main application. You can find the virtual desktop in the Meta store for 25 bucks and it allows you to uh, connect wirelessly your headset to the PC. Um, you just need to have a very fast uh, router, uh, kind of um, Wi-Fi 6 router uh, for fast data transmission and you have to uh, have your PC connected to your um, router directly via LAN and not uh, Wi-Fi. Um, those are the requirements for having a um, very smooth and fast connection between um, the headset and uh, virtual desktop. So this is the streamer. Um, these are uh, those are the um, maybe the default uh, settings. Uh, the preferred codec is the HEVC 10 bit um, open XR runtime and uh, everything is everything else um, is pretty much default then we have the the other streamer options so you should uh, be you should be able to see them um, the important settings are the streaming options and based on your graphic uh, on your graphic card uh, you can choose between um, a level of, uh, you know, resolution between potato and godlike. Personally, having a 4080 uh, S, I I am good with godlike, which allows you to use a monster resolution, um, an extreme clarity. Okay, for your uh, for your headset. VR, VR frame rate, um, this can be 72 or 80 uh, frame per second. Um, remember that having these options, this is very important option enabled, um, always enables the, sy the synchronous space warp. Uh, this uh, allows the PC to render uh, 40 of these 80 frames. So, um, the PC will will render the graphic at 40 FPS, and the other 40 are rendered by the this uh, this algorithm. So the final perception you have in the VR will be of 80 frames per second, uh, and the PC will work for uh, giving only 40, only a half. So it's important that this is this causes the PC to switch to half frame rate while headset extrapolates the missing frames. This is super important to have uh, this enabled. Uh, other advanced options, you can 
very important is not Dragon Game Super Resolution that you cannot see this in the two dim dimension mirroring, um, but you can see this inside the VR, inside the headset. This gives gives an upscale and the image is increased in even in further detail. Sorry, this is video buffering. It helps with uh, stuttering, and this is um, a preference for color this gives a more um, you know more um, a warm color but you can de de deactivate this if you don't like it okay so VR bitrate my advice is not to set it to maximum but to keep at uh, 120 130 megabit per second maximum and the sharpening this is default 75 percent I didn't see much um, much uh, improvement can stay default 75 percent for me is good and this is the vr pass through if you want to have um to blend vr games with your environment there's there's plenty of options that can be tested and and used okay so these are my uh, personal um streaming options for a virtual desktop so after virtual desktop let's see what my pc settings are like so games game mode it is activated even if uh, some people say that they prefer having it it's off i leave it on because the system is mainly focused on running the game and nothing else in my opinion and uh, it is also advised by Microsoft so try yourself I prefer having it on this is hex the so-called hardware uh, GPU acceleration shelling um, I keep it on deactivated because it may improve FPS a bit but I prefer to have it off because in VR in my opinion it improves smoothness and it is the most important for VR uh, rendering so after many tests I've come to the conclusion that this has to be deactivated then let's go to my Nvidia control panel settings very very simple I used to have a uh, per game settings Microsoft Flight Simulator, as you can see, everything is on global, so it is a default NVIDIA, but one. This, uh, this is the um, PSU management, I prefer that the GPU has got the maximum PSU power available when it runs, so prefer maximum performances for this one. Everything else is on global, on default. Then let's go to Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, General Options, VR. So first of all, very important to have the maximum quality and the best performance. Please use the DLSS NVIDIA Super Resolution. This is a big, big, big improvement over TAA for me. And also, I used to use the ultra quality settings. Remember that for having this available, you have to download and use a separate program. And I leave the link in the description of all my VR video. Click on this and follow uh, the instructions to get this ultra quality available it improves a lot clarity and sharpness uh, when you fly on glass cockpits uh, especially okay you can try with quality but with ultra quality you will lose a bit of performance but you will gain a lot of clarity in uh, in the displays the other important the settings here are terrain level of detail object level of detail don't go too far from 100 in VR. If you, if you have a 1490, yes, you can set them to one, 120, one, 150, but okay, I can go to 200 only with very, very, very slow plane 
or helicopter, uh, but not with fast jets and liners and so on. So keep it keep those two around 100. This uh, off-screen terrain pre-caching set it to ultra. This is very important because everything is loaded uh, in the memory, in the graphical memory, in, in the in the RAM. So the the system doesn't need to load objects and stuff whenever you turn your head. So this on Ultra avoids stuttering. Very, very important. This is my advice. And you can see also other settings, uh, buildings, trees, medium, medium, grass and bushes, low. Take a look at those. Uh, text resolution, if you have plenty of VRAM, you can set safely to ultra. As far as all these, um, you know, shadows and other effects settings are concerned, I prefer having them on a low, medium, or even off uh, level, because, in my opinion, in VR they are pretty much impacting performances, but they don't improve quality so much. Uh, you can try yourself and let me know. So. Take a look at those settings uh, below uh, below the texture resolution. Everything is on a medium to low setting. Okay, so these are graphical settings. Let's go to the traffic settings in VR. Everything is off, zero or very low. This is very important because the traffic settings impact CPU performance. So if you fly on VATSIM, you don't need having uh, the AI traffic uh, vehicle, aircraft, uh, uh, ground aircraft density, work density, let, so let put them on zero. And also land and sea traffic, I don't care having those objects. The only one I care about is animals, so I put fauna density to 100% because uh, whenever I encounter a group of animals, I want to see uh, I want to see them, but they are not impacting at all uh, performance. All right, guys. I hope this video has been enough useful to you. Uh, let me know in the comments below um, all about your tests and trials. Uh, let me know if you agree or not with. Um, certain settings. Uh, I know that uh, the first times it can be uh, a bit frustrating to find out the, the right spot for um, both performance and quality in VR, but after many attempts um, and many, many and much patience, you can find your best and optimum uh, settings and, and options for a um, perfect VR ride. Okay, so uh, thank you again for following this channel and again let me know in the comments below and see you to the next video. Bye bye to everyone!